All right. Good afternoon, everybody. We are in the studio once again with Life Lessons Live. Let's talk edition with the crew. I'm in with Stephanie Monique, my spiritual daughter, and we are excited about being on today. Uh, it's, it's good to be here. Uh, I pray that you are having an amazing day, an amazing life. Praise God. And uh, you know we're here. We believe that conversations birth new seasons, mm -hmm. and uh, we want you to join in. You can join in by commenting on the comment in the comment section on our GP Ministries Facebook page, and we welcome you. This is a no judgment zone. We're not here to be critical. We're not here to to bring forth condemnation, guilt, or shame. We're here to bring about uh, some wisdom and knowledge and revelation uh, to help us uh, be better. We want everybody to have an amazing life. I know I do. I believe Stephanie does too. And uh, also we want you uh, to know that I'm making an adjustment, guys. Give me just a second. I'm sorry. I uh, want you to know that, uh, again, no judgment zone. We, we're here to be respectful and honorable. We don't know everything, but that which we know we are willing to share. Mm -hmm. and, and what we all bring to the table, I believe that, they are answers in the midst of us because we are better together and more together. Uh, as I say, what you bring a little bit of what you know, a little bit of what I know, our lives, experiences, and we can do very, very well. And and this is what we've made a statement. I think we started saying this earlier part of the summer, I believe, Stephanie. Let's do better. Let's make a choice as a people. Let's do better. Mm -hmm. Let's not uh, avoid some difficult conversations. Let's not avoid taking responsibility for some things and, and, you know, making other people, um, making other people, it, it other people's fault. Yeah. Say, what part do I play? How can I make it better? How can I be better? How can I do better? And uh, because change begins with me and if change begins with me and we all take that same attitude, then we, 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 the sum total who we are together, we can all be better. Yeah. Come on, introduce yourself, Stephanie. Share a little something that's just in my heart, and I know there's a lot in your heart too. So take a hey. moment to share. You. Hey, world! I am uh, Stephanie Monique right here in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, excited to be back. Uh, remember, you guys are listening, tuning in to us live right now. But don't forget that you can listen anywhere in the world, and you can listen via. Um, you know, kbnradio.net. So please make sure that you do that. Uh, and if you're local with us in our area, remember um, last week's session is playing tonight. And so this, what we're airing, this, what we're doing right now will be airing next week. So I did want to say that. Um, so Bishop, I, I'm just excited to talk about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm still learning. I'm still growing. And man, can I tell you, fruit is being developed in my life. I think sometimes when we go through situations and uh, challenges or conflicts, mm -hmm. uh, those are discovery moments. And those are moments that, um, you know, your fruit is being developed and your character is being developed. And mm -hmm. Learning to make healthy decisions. And um, one thing that really helps me, even in my adult life, is as I continue to grow and learn, is that um, you know, you never fail. I think sometimes we we feel like it's over or we didn't accomplish what we set out to accomplish. And I think once you um change your perspective about that and just learn that you never fail, you just learn what not to do, or you or you discover some new things. Yeah. So once you learn to apply that and you kind of take that attitude and you kind of have that um, perseverance within yourself, you will begin mm -hmm. things um, a little bit clearer. And, um, you know, you won't be all upset about, you know, failing and or losing or anything like that. And so that has helped me. And that even helps me in what we're talking about, like as far as conflict or, you know, just moments that, um you come into a disagreement, whether that be with yourself or someone else, uh, <laughs> you know. And so, um, man, talk about submission, all of those things. Those things are needed in relationships. If everybody always said yes to everything that we did, where would we really be? Yeah, that's true. So, guys, we've been talking about we kind of jumped in because we kind of been in this vein. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that may be just getting in uh, on this week's conversation or and everything, we've been talking about success, and we've we've been in this for a while now. I mean, this, mm -hmm. I think this is 
part 14 to this or something like that. But we got over into relationships um, and we started talking about conflict resolution. Okay. And conflict, all conflict isn't bad. It isn't negative. And even if it has to be something difficult, there is a way that we can resolve differences and still win. We just have to have a right attitude. We got to think win-win. Yes, we start sir. talking about the seven habits of, of uh, highly effective people. Yes. And one of them is to have a win-win attitude. The other is to, one of them is seek to understand before wanting to be understood. And so many times conflict isn't resolved successfully or we come out moving forward, being better, wiser, stronger, as I said, never losing, but learning uh, because we never come to a place of understanding. Mm. And so a lot of it had to do with our communication skills, uh, just so many different types of things are going on. And so today I, I want to deal in this vein. Um, and that's uh, one conflict isn't, we don't have to be afraid of the word uh, or okay. the, or the the experience because sometimes we can feel conflict. We can feel <laughs> we can feel difference, man. Come on, how, you know we, how we start. We, how, how we say it? How we say it? Let's deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah, the elephant in the room. You know, we we know we feel some pushback. You know, we see there's some disagreement. We see it in facial express inspections. We see it in body language. All those things. We don't have to be afraid of those things. We need to just get the right skills in our life to navigate through them and to to gain because if somebody's feeling uncomfortable in my presence i want to know why they're feeling uncomfortable and it's okay if they don't agree with what i'm saying or what i'm doing or all the different types of things they might not understand why i'm doing what i'm doing they might not understand why i see it what i see it and that is okay because one they may not have been uh present when when something happened that i needed to address that's good. They're not even aware of what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's okay. And when we and we mature and we're not afraid of asking questions and having healthy conversations, okay, and, and choosing not to be offended because I realize, well, you know, I might not understand why he said that, why he's doing that, why uh, he believes that way why that's his conviction. It may not be your conviction today. It may not ever become your conviction, but it's my conviction. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it's my conviction. And so again, not being judgmental or critical. I'm not better than you. I'm not smarter than you, any of that. It just so happens to be experiences or, or whatever uh, 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 wisdom I may have or conviction I may have about something. It doesn't have to be yours. And it is quite all right. Amen. Yes. So it doesn't have to be negative. So we got to talk about conflict. Everybody just say conflict, 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 conflict. conflict, 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 conflict. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be negative. It's an opportunity to learn. So today I want to talk about relational things. And this is what, what came in my spirit and in my heart. Is, is it personality or temperament or is it purpose? Is that what's causing the difference? Is that what's causing the, the uneasiness? Is that what's causing our need to, to get a greater understanding? Sometimes it's of yourself. Sometimes it's of others. Um, uh, sometimes it's good. And this is what, what, I, what I came to place is all conflict is a negative. Sometimes it's a revelation or it's a place of discovery, an opportunity to come to an understanding. OK, sometimes it's within yourself. Sometimes it's about other people. OK, understanding um, and in and, and conflict or these periods of discovery and revelation or gaining of understanding is necessary to achieve relational success. Even when you start talking about marriage, you know, the, the first couple of years is the honeymoon phase. You know, mm -hmm. you don't really know each other. You know what I'm saying? And, That's and, right. And then you're going on all of that. You're still emotional. You all lovey dovey. Ooh, 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 I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. you know, I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. But yeah. then you start, you start discovering things. You start discovering, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some bad habits, some 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 little things that you know you got little quirks about, and all of that, or they have quirks about, and and now, man, that thing's starting to rub you the wrong way. You know, come on, Bishop. Trouble um, in the city. 
Yeah, there's trouble, trouble in the city, and, and, and after a while, there might be some smoke in the city. Come on, now. <laughs> you know, but you need to get an understanding of maybe why this person doesn't do this or why they do this to this extreme. Okay, yeah. it could be a past life experience that traumatized them. Does that make sense? Hey, this is Charlotte. Hey, man, we miss you. We miss you. We miss you. God bless you. We sure do. you. Charlotte. Hey, man, brother Johnson. God bless you, man. And so, so you go through this, these years of discovery, okay? Yes. And and one of the things I found that when you get to these places, there's some things you got to ask, some questions you have to ask when we start talking about conflict resolution and knowing that this is a time of, of revelation or discovery and coming to understanding. Is this about uh, personality or purpose? Yeah, yeah, personality or, or is this about purpose uh did i really know who i was you know Ooh. is it helping me to find out who i really am Ooh, because baby. somebody's looking at you and they're pointing some things out to you that you didn't even know about yourself oh bishop <laughs> you know is this about character is my character coming in question now because i i don't i don't keep my word uh i'm not timely i'm not you know and, and you didn't really know that until you got into this relationship. That's Sometimes good. a relationship is a job. Sometimes it is a relationship between uh, 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 be, for the purpose of dating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, different things are coming on. So you got these discovery phases going on. Do I have a communication problem? Oh, talk about it. Listen, am I incompetent in some things? It could be as simple as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you're married now. You listen to this now. This I'm, I'm ruffling the feathers now. Yes, you are. You thought you could ready. really cook. I mean, you thought yo 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 cornbread was the bomb in his jiffy mix. <laughs> you didn't know nothing but jiffy mix. Come on yes, now, and now you're with a mate or a spouse who's used to growing up on the black skillet cornbread with buttermilk and, and hot butter and got the little crust under the bottom and around the edges. Come on now, and it's hot, and you can just eat some bread and milk, and you got a whole meal. Yeah. And now you come giving me this, this jiffy mix out the box that's sweet, tastes like cake, feel like cake, and all that. <laughs> Love and now we're going to fall out by some cornbread. By some cornbread. <laughs> Okay, so, so you don't know what you don't know. Do you find out what you don't know? Uh, there's always a more excellent way. And if you thought you already knew the way and you're not open to find a more excellent way, it could be some conflict there. Is it my temperament? I don't know my own temperament. I don't know how God wired me. I don't know why I act the way that I act and behave the way that I hate based upon my personality, my past experiences and these types of things. Oh, come on now. Yes. And then here's the last one, Stephanie. And I know I've said a lot and I want you to chime in on some of this stuff. Is this the will of God? Oh, that's good. Is this conflict happening because this isn't the will of God? Is this conflict happening because it is a will of God? And now you are making me better and me being better and you being better. Our lives are going to glorify God. And this is going to help me be successful in achieving my God given calling and purpose. That's, That's a lot right there, Stephanie. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Conflict. Yes, Charlotte. Yes. Cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cornbread. So, Bishop, I, I like what you said. You said, is this conflict happening because it's the will of God or is it happening because? Yeah, and, 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 it's, and I'm coming to this place of revelation or discovery. This is not the will of God. You know, I did this. Remember, we talked about this. We started talking about healthy relationships. Was this lust or love? Yes. You know, was I anxious or was this is this a God ordained relationship? It doesn't always have to be about dating. Okay. It could be about ministry. It could be about friendships. Mm -hmm. OK, every person that you may choose to be a friend 
may not be a God ordained friendship. Mm. You did it out of proximity. That's who you had to choose from. Sometimes you, 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 you begin to befriend someone because you had um, the same unhealed hurts and unresolved issues. You angry, they angry. And so two angry spirits linked up together and it was never because that's what God wanted, you know, a, a friendship that God wanted to happen. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it's convenience. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a number of things and, and we just got to come to the place where we, we put a stake in the ground that we can have great friendships, great relationships, whether it be employee employer relationships uh, whether it be marriages, uh, again, we're talking about if, if, if we're dating, if we're not dating with a purpose, there's no purpose in dating. Yes. Uh, this is going somewhere. There's no such thing as casual sex. Okay? Right. There's no such thing as that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got to mature past all of those different types of things and know that um, God is a God of relationships. We need relationships. We need each other. Mm -hmm. But we got to learn how to to have healthy relationships, be successful yeah. in relationships. OK, and not not accept the norm uh, and pick up all the all the little rhetoric that's out there. Everybody toxic, you know, da, 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 and, and take on these little, little, you know, hater blockers and and everybody hating on you and all these things. I think, no, 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 no. Come on, let's let's understand some things and, and know that um, all of this is bigger than than just us. Mm -hmm. Bishop, I, I want to say when you started talking about like temperament, um, you know, you, you named a couple of things, but, you know, temperament, personality, um, when it's when we're talking about conflict. And one more thing that I thought about was like the way that we communicate or the way that yes. we, um, you know, learn or receive um information, knowledge, uh, you know, messages, all of that. And so I started thinking about too, like sometimes the conflict really is simply just, we don't know how to relate to one another or communicate to one another. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as like temperament or, you know, uh, even as simple as, as, as receiving and transmitting. Yes. Okay. A person may transmit one way, or, or this is what they, they want to say. They say it, they're very verbal, uh -huh. okay? But that's not how they receive. Because they talk a lot, you think if you just talk to them, they're hearing you, and they're not, okay? They're not, because that's not the way they receive. You can mm -hmm. transmit one way. You either are, are, are audible, visual, vis, visual, vis, Lord Jesus. visual, visual, Visual. Or you're kinesthetic, yes. which means you're a feeler. So you have somebody that may very be very talkative and sometimes they talk loud. And then when you talk loud to them, they draw up on you they because feel they're a kinesthetic receiver. And so now they think you're hollering at them and you're mad at them. OK, and they're offended. Come on, Bishop. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Charlotte says young folk are saying that they are just matching energy since COVID, basically trying to figure each other out. Um, yeah, we start using terms, you know, energy and all of that. We just need to know uh, we got to get in touch with who we really are. We are spirits that's housing a body that has a soul. And we, when, our, when our spirits are corrupt, then we're going to operate in corrupt behavior wrong ways of thinking feeling and behaving all those types of things so yes charlotte that is out there um and um but we got to learn how to how to be relational how to have relationships yes you know and know that there are there is a such thing as healthy friendships healthy marriages um healthy places to be employed. We can have employee, employer, great relationships. I mean, so many things. It's just that we've missed some things. We've stopped talking about some things and we've been um, driven um, by the cares of life. And like you said, COVID, Charlotte, just different types of things. And we've gotten away from keeping the main thing, the main thing, and that's people. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, 
the sum total of, of wealth is 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 based upon the relationships that we establish. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And success is 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 relational. Mm -hmm. um, who, who who, you know, when I look around, I could achieve a whole lot of things, but if my marriage has failed, if my children hate me and don't honor me and respect me, if nobody likes me. Uh, you know, I got to pay people to be around me. I have achieved, I have some money and materialism and all that. And, and the only people want to be around me is, is the people that I pay or I'm always giving things to or whatever. Mm. It's always, they're only here for the fish and the loaves. They're not here because we have a great relationship and there's okay. some type of, of greater purpose in us being together and everything's made better because of, of, of our lives being together, regardless of of the nature of what they do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we all have certain things that we can do, talents and gifts and those types of things. It's not based on who's the greatest and all of that. Right. It's about the divine relationship, you know? Um, so when we start talking about these things, and, and that's a great point, Charlotte, and, and we got to help and, and talk them through some things. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are suffering from an identity crisis. They don't know who they were, who they are. It's not until you get into right relationships that you really begin to discover who, who you are. The first relationship you need to have is with God. Yes, that's good, Bishop. Because you're creating his image and his likeness and for his purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's going to where you're going to find out why I exist, why I am, purpose is why. So that's the first relationship. And then what happens is when you get that down pat, and sometimes people come in your life to help you to discover that, that purpose yes. from God. But if they're the wrong people, you lose all sense of your identity. You have a wrong view of yourself and that will create wrong relationships, allow you to be taken further and further away from the intention of God for your life, which is going to bring about uh, um, uh, suffering, a needless, needless suffering and, and different types of things, lack of joy and peace. You're not going to have any peace. And then you start self-medicating. Uh, you start sexing. You start. Uh, you know, hustling, you start doing all types of things, trying to bring about gratification. Mm -hmm. Really, God wants you to discover uh, his peace, mm -hmm. uh, uh, his peace, being in, in the right place with the right people at the right time, doing the right things. Wow. That, that allows you to experience peace, right relationships. That's how you're going to know I'm in the will of God. The safest place you can be is in the will of God. Yes. And the will of God involves people, it involves places, it involves things in your life. Mm -hmm. And so we got to talk about those things because people are searching and they want to know, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we don't have conversation about it, they just searching, they just trying, they just shooting in the dark. Yeah. You know, just shooting in the dark. Bishop, when you opened up, you said, is this conflict for personality or for purpose? Is, is it about personality? Is it about temperament? Okay. Okay. Is, is it the temperament difference? Okay. You don't understand that I'm choleric. So I have this dominating sense about me. And they'll call it energy, uh, Sister Charlotte, when really it, it's temperament. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have some people, they are melancholy. They're very cautious people. They kind of lay back. You know what I'm saying? Then you have some people that are sanguine. These are the four basic uh, temperaments that we operate in, okay? Yes. Choleric, they're very dominating, very forward thinking, very, very uh, boisterous, okay? You have the sanguine person, they're inspiring, they're always, they're talkative, they can meet anybody, they never meet strangers and all those types of things. Do you know a person that's very melancholy and a person that's very sanguine? Man, they can make a melancholy person very nervous being around a sanguine person. They, be, they say stuff to you like, man, you don't never meet a stranger, do you? And and <laughs> you know, just stuff like that is going on, and it could could become a conflict in the relationship if you don't understand. You just gotta let her be her. You gotta let him be him. And 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 you'll think sometime they're being disrespectful towards you, or da 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 da, or whatever. And that's not even the case. You don't understand their temperament. They have to do. It. They can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Then you have then you have that 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 temperament that's called phlegmatic. 
uh-huh. which is they just really they steady. They they steady as they go. They're very they're very on point. They're very um uh, um what I want to say task oriented. Um, hey, consistent. You know. I've come to find out that phlegmatic temperaments are very diplomatic and many yeah. negotiators. Mm-hmm. They get along with all of the temperaments the best. You you ever had one of those friends or maybe an aunt, you know, and, and you say, man, we need Keisha here so she can, uh, you know, uh, referee or whatever the case may be. But they they tend to kind of connect with each temperament and can hang with each temperament. Yeah. You know, is this person an extrovert or an introvert? You know, do they like being around a group of people or do some people just prefer just being around one or two people? You know, extroverts and introverts, you know. I was just going to say what we're talking about um, is so important because these are key factors. Um, even that, that we need to know about ourselves. Yes. Um, sometimes, you know, you may feel like you know, why do I always seem to need people around? Um, And so that's one of the things of a, of a sanguine person or Mm -hmm. of a sanguine person or extroverted person. And so, um, you know, just knowing that about yourself and then being able to communicate that with others. I remember, um, you know, saying to some of my friends, sometimes you always, you know, want to just sit at the house, like, let's go somewhere, let's do something. But that's just not the way that they uh, replenish or, you know, enjoy, right? you know, their time. Yeah, so them being people, around a group of people gives them anxiety. Yeah. They're not comfortable with that. Yes, yes. Especially with people that they're not familiar with or that they don't know. Um, it does, they tend to be more observant. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not that they don't trust people, but it's just, they do. They may feel a little bit of anxiousness or, you know, just not that talkative person like a sanguine would be to connect with people. And I think sometimes these things, man, will cause you to have a greater understanding of people that you are uh, in relationship with. But also we got to care enough to know enough, because if I really don't care why you act the way you act or why you respond the way you respond, mm-hmm. I'm not going to try to learn you know, why you are the way that you are. Yeah. And conflict can push us to the place of, man, I need to, I need to find out. I need to have a conversation. I need to to understand. And can I tell you something? Sometimes because we don't even know ourselves. That's what I said. Some conflicts is because you really didn't know who you were. Yes. So it's not bad. And so somebody can ask you a question. You'd be like, you know what? I don't know why I'm like that. And you don't even know the temperaments. You know, you, you've never been in. I mean, some people have learned this because of their, their work. Mm-hmm. Um, some people have never heard these things before in their life. You know what I'm saying? To you? Some people have heard it on YouTube or Google or they're hearing us talking about it right now. Yeah. But but we've got to do better at wanting to be relational uh, in conflict. Many times push us to a place of seeking to understand. Yeah, seeking to understand mm-hmm. why, you know, I, I hear about personalities and temperaments. What does that really mean? You know, and uh, I want y'all to know, those of you that are listening, man, uh, I'd love to, and me and Stephanie was talking about this before we came on the air. We are willing, I am willing, we can, we can, we can have some courses. We can, we can come together, we can meet, do workshop sessions, we can talk about this stuff. We can't keep failing in marriage. We can't keep failing in friendships. I, I love my friends. I, I I thank God. You know, me and Bishop Calvin Ramsey, we, we different, but but man, we great friends. We we we, you know, we we don't have no issues, man. We we good. We good in the neighborhood. I mean, we good. You know, and and um um, but we we got to we got to seek to understand. We we need to gain some wisdom and some knowledge and some things. We just. Yes. Shooting in the dark, just kind of going along to get along. And uh, Sister Charlotte said, "Young people are saying I'm just matching folk energy." Man, that could be dangerous. You know, you know, you put bleach and in, in, uh, bleach and in, in ammonia together, you got a problem. <laughs> you got a problem. <laughs> you got a problem. So we don't need to do that. We don't need to be matching energy and those types of things, man. I need to know who I am. I need to operate mm-hmm. in in with a balance mm-hmm. um, and understand others. Not get offended when someone um, is a little choleric, um, 
I understand. Okay, they're a little dominating. I'm good with that. I know that's a part of their temperament. They didn't mean no harm. Oh, come on out. It could happen in the grocery store. Come on. That person is kind of pushing in front of you, trying to get to the mayonnaise. <laughs> Listen, they didn't mean no harm. They're just a little choleric. You just kind of push back. I know the first thing we want to say, we'll make it about it. We'll make it personal. They was disrespectful. They this and then the other. And I can be honest with you. I've been on task, Stephanie. I've been on task. I realized I was on task. And I've been rude sometimes. Uh, yes. You know, sometimes I might communicate with you and you help me with so many things. I don't know what I would do without <laughs> being in my life. And I'll shoot you a text and it's just straightforward. Bam. And then I go back and I say, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How but, are you today? <laughs> but you know what? I love how you said, first and foremost, we have a relationship. And so you get to know one another, like you get to know one another's heart. You get to know one another's character. And even if there's a, a mistake or a mishap or whatever the case may be, you you can have a conversation and you can say, hey, you know, um, you know, whatever the case may be. But because um, you you you've taking the time to know a person and like, and not be moved by, you know, a task or a day or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so that's what I was saying, like taking the time to really get to know a person and understand, um, you know, why they did what they did or just, you know, looking deeper. Those things are so important. They are. And, and, and just knowing that, and, and again, being relational, but when we don't give things enough time to even build relationships, mm -hmm. you know, you got to have experience. You got to have conversations. Yes. You got to be aware. You got to be conscious of things. You do pay attention to people's body language. You should pay attention to people's facial expressions. You should, uh, if somebody, you say something and, and somebody kind of gets a frown on their face, don't be so um, um, selfish. You know, what's wrong with you? You didn't like what I said? Right. Come on. Now. You know, why, why don't you say it like this? I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they didn't just understand. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't understand what you said because you realize and you're talking, but they, they, they are kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. or they're visual, mm -hmm. they might say to you, can you, can you paint me a picture of that? Because I don't understand what you're talking about. And them frowning wasn't that they were offended at you or you said something wrong. Their frown was, I don't understand this. Yeah. I don't understand. It. And because you're very verbal, you just keep on blowing, just keep on going, keep on going. And now you're frustrated with them. You feel like, you know, what well, they don't, they, you know, they ain't with me and all the different I think. No, 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 no. We got to learn how to communicate with people we intend to have relationship with. OK. And, and that comes down to spouses. That come down to parenting. That comes down to your friendships. That comes down to your employers. Mm -hmm. That comes down to you being an employer and having employees. That mm -hmm. comes down to you doing any ministry work. I mean, communication skills is, is important. We need to understand them. We need to talk about them. And we need to care enough about other people to find out their communication frequency. Okay. Bishop, I have even come to find out that when you have some conflicts and challenges, um, and I revert back to some things. And, hey, bro, and, just and I look at some things. Um, Sometimes we have learned behaviors or um, we adapt, like we were talking about coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, and we adapt um, like defense mechanisms and stuff too. And so sometimes when we have conflict, it is to actually confront mm. the way that we have been um, operating because, and when you, when you take this course that we teach about temperament theory, you will learn that your personality is um, shaped by your experiences, your background, yes. your parents. Yes. You know, it's shaped by, you know, things that you have went through and, you know, decisions that you have made, whether they be good or bad, mm -hmm. in a 
response or in a reaction to something. And then we um, just adapt that way of operating and we kind of yeah. live life that way. However, that may not be the proper way to respond or the proper way to be. And so sometimes when conflict happens, you know, those things are discovered and you may right. find yourself saying, well, that's just the way that I am. And if that is a statement that you have made, I am suggesting to you today to go back, look again and try again, because there's always a more excellent way right. um, to do things and to actually communicate and to actually engage in a relationship. Yeah. And all and, and be made better. We're all getting better, Stephanie. Oh, yes, I can say right. this right now. I'm in the best place in my life of my life in my lifetime right now. That's amazing. I've baby. taken the lessons I've learned. Um, I thank God for my wife. She taught me how to love, you know, how thank to you. love, how to love a, a wife. She helped me to be a better father. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? I thank God for my children. Yes, sir. You understand? What I'm I thank God for all of you, my parishioners as, as a pastor, you know, I've, I've, I've learned. So I'm in the best place of my life. Yes. Uh, today. And and if we think that uh, we should just stay the same and stay stuck uh, in these molds of what happened to us when I was a child, the knowledge I had when I was when I was, you know, 15, uh, you know, come on, you may have made that have to take that state. You might have had to fight everybody that was around because you got beat up every day going home from school, but you ain't got to fight no more. Come on, you're an adult. You fight, you pick a fight with everybody about anything. You still oh, wow. fighting to, to, you know, as though somebody's trying to take something from you or, or, or you still feel insecure or afraid or scared. No, 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 no. Come on, we've got to grow in knowledge and in wisdom and come into a place of understanding. You're not in that same environment anymore. So right. you don't have to behave that way. You don't have to feel that way now. Um, and so relationships are, uh, requires us to evolve, of, us to grow, us to become better. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, but you got to value relationships. You got to value them. Okay. You got to value them. And so, as I said, all conflict isn't negative. That's and if right. we have the right attitude, it don't, none of it has to be negative. It may, we may come up with some results we didn't, we didn't desire, mm -hmm. but we've learned. Okay. And, and some losses isn't a really loss. If you learn how to pray, if you learn how to who, who you are, if you learn what not to do, uh, you learn that man, that was a relationship that I really desired to have, but my behavior messed that up. I guarantee you, you won't repeat that behavior in your next relationship. You it cost you something. It cost you something dearly. However, you learn what not to do mm -hmm. and in the next relationship. OK, that God allows. All right. You can be better for that person. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. So we've got to come to this place uh, of this and quit thinking negative about conflict. OK, I you got to admit, I didn't know who I really was. No. Mm -mm. All right. You got to You got to admit. Man, I thought I was a stand-up dude till I, I I I met someone that was um you know didn't 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 uh what I want to say blow smoke. You know, they tell you like they gonna tell you like it really T I E is as the old people say. Come on. You know, That's I thought right. you were sharp until you, you got around some knives that were sharper than you. Ooh. You know, if you hanging out with people, you the sharpest knife in the drawer. You need to get another circle of people. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Just just says this. He says relationships are just that ships that take us to new levels, ways of thinking and maturity. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when you start talking about is this relationship, is this the will of God? Is this helping me to achieve my God given 
uh, purpose? Is this making me better? Uh, am I making that person better? Is this person making me better? Whether it be a friendship, whether it be employee-employer relationship. Am I here pushing the vision of this company or am I being toxic? Am I am I hindering? I don't care about what I do. I'm not, I, you know, my job, I don't do well. I just do just enough to get by. All right. That's not a healthy relationship. Okay. I'm just here for the paycheck. Uh, you know, all those types of things, man. That's not a healthy relationship. And, and it's not healthy for you. Okay. It's not healthy for you because you're not being the best person that you could be. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and, um, uh, and, and if you're doing it in that scenario, you're probably doing it in some other scenarios too. You're probably mm -hmm. doing it in the relationships that you have. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you keep the relationship just because it's beneficial to you. Oh, Bishop. Oh, my. Talk it's about it now. To you. Okay. Uh -oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so, man, there's so many things. So many things. I do want to ask you this, though, that. Um, is there such thing as like healthy tension or because I know we were talking about, you know, the tension in the room or tension in relationships. Um, but is there such thing as like a healthy tension or maybe healthy conflict or healthy confrontation? Yes, it is. Uh, again, uh, when you think of a rubber band, a rubber band isn't operating at its potential until it's being stretched. And so, so Bishop Kirby says that uh, um, we we need tension uh, to make sure that that we operate in character and have integrity. That's good. So that tension is 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 is, is the stretching of you. Yes. You know, because you can easily slide back and get into a relaxed state. Uh, uh, that tension in the room can help you become a better communicator. Uh, it could cause you to 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 have a conversation with God that you wouldn't have had if there was no tension. Um, That's good. There's understanding that sometimes you assume that people have that they don't. No. So the tension in the room help you to uh, uh, bring about a greater understanding. Uh, I mean, so many different types of things. I think that is all attitude is all about perspective and when you have an identity crisis you think everything is 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 the devil you think everything is somebody trying to do some harm to you well yeah. i believe that every place that i am and every person that i meet i come to add value to them that's good i do even if it's the meanest person in the world and i came to just show them some love today the to smile at them in the, in the midst of their meanness I didn't come to that. I, I don't need uh, external affirmation. Mm. I get my affirmation from God. Therefore, I can go forth and uh, I've been delivered from the evils of this world. That's what Jesus prayed for me to do. So when I meet evil, I can put light on darkness because mm -hmm. darkness is not going to overtake my light. OK, and so. And and I take the attitude if I if I if I missed it because I allowed someone that was on the outside of me to become greater than than who's on the inside of me, I have need to pray. Mm. I, I have need because I allow the darkness in this world uh, to 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 cause me to become something that that I I not mm. behave in ways I shouldn't have behaved. Mm -hmm. Think in ways I shouldn't have thought. Mm -hmm. Does that makes sense. Yes, sir. And I didn't add value. Yes, sir. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely, it does. Yeah. So it, it's about perspective. It's about being confident in who you are. Uh, any person with an identity crisis is a danger to themselves and to those others. What level of danger? I'm not talking about you. Some. A horrible person, all of that. Right. But the relationship is in danger. Mm. Okay. Um, and and so uh, Jesus didn't allow Peter, who he was, uh, and Judas, who he was, to mm. call him anything other than who God created him to be. 
Does yes. that make sense? He yes. told Peter who he was. He told Peter, "You gonna, you gonna, you gonna uh, 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 deny me three times before the cock crow." He didn't get offended with Peter. No. Nope. Coming out, he imparted into him, and Peter uh, did what he was purpose and called to do. His relationship right. with Jesus and him made him better. Judas, Judas had a purpose. He knew the Amen that Jesus knew he was gonna give him up. He still called him friend. That's Come good. On yeah. And the relationship served its purpose. Mm. Okay. See, wherever purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Thank you, Dr. Miles Monroe. And you know, when we get really got to understand that, because I got to know why. Why does this relationship exist? Is this the will of God? Okay. And if it's the will of God, when something, when conflict arises, you're just, this is happening to make me better. I'm going to be a better husband. I'm going to be a better father. I'm, I'm going to be a better friend. Come on. Mm-hmm. Stephanie, how can I be a better friend to you? I, I can come because I really desire and value the friendship. And I say yesterday in our conversation, I, I, don't, I didn't feel comfortable the way that conversation went. Could I have said something different? Amen. That's good. Come on now. Are you mm-hmm. understanding what I'm saying? Yes, and, sir. And we can get good at it. We can stop in the midst of, of conflict. Mm-hmm. And address it. Remember, I think we talked about yesterday, uh, last week. I said yesterday. It feel like it was yesterday. Last mm-hmm. week, uh, when you start discovering and having these conflicts, as even as a married couple, you don't have to be mad for six months. No. You know, you you can address it, um, and you can have it have it uh, uh, resolved before you go to bed at night. That's what the Bible mm-hmm. tells us. Don't go to bed on your wrath. Yeah. Is yes. that right? Come yes, on. Sir. So that means you got to resolve conflict mm. and know that this isn't bad. All things is working together for good for them that love God. Amen. Come on now. And are called according to his purpose. That's why you got to identify is this relationship ordained of God? Is mm. this the will of God? Because if you can identify the will of God, there's grace there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, there's wisdom there. Okay. And there are right relationships. If you're paying attention, you desire because when a student shows up, the teacher appears. Okay. When you truly desire wisdom, when you truly desire, because uh, whatever you desire, a teacher will show up to teach you. Mm. Okay. Absolutely. And in a relationship, there, there are people that can teach you how to be great friends. They can teach you. There are people that will show up to tell you how to blow a friendship up. That's true. It depends on what you design in your heart. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that I know that sounds that, but I, I'm, I'm just telling you, the Bible says that guard your heart with all diligence for out yes. of it, flow the issues of life. Uh-huh. And, um, um, uh, that points me back to what's really in my heart. You know, mm-hmm. I can want to to dissolve a friendship. I can want to dissolve a relationship. I can want to dissolve a marriage, and I can find every reason to do so. Believe mm-hmm. me, the enemy will point it out. He sure will. He will point it out. You don't yeah. have no chemistry. You know, different types of things. Does that make sense? Yes, sir, Bishop. Yeah. I think also, too, I think even in our divine relationships, in those purposeful, God ordained relationships, <clears throat> I think maybe sometimes we think that they, um, you know, it's divine and it's from God. So we shouldn't have no conflict or we shouldn't have no problems. And uh, that's a myth because um, your divine relationships, man, they come to make you better. They come to bring out greatness and um, you know, they help you. And um, when there's accountability and responsibility <laughs> being, um, you know, the standard of those things being uh, expected or desired from you, uh, you will find yourself in some conflict with your own self. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. So, um, you know, just making sure that we don't get those things mixed up, you know, accountability mm-hmm. and responsibility and then being able to deal with those things. Um, we call it like this sharpening your saw. 
or mm -hmm. iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when those sparks get the going, we be like, eh, I'm done. I, you know, or yeah. like Steve Urkel, you know, I'm, I don't have to take this. I'm going home. Yeah. And so, and you will exit some relationships that were purposed and, de and designed for you to be in to get you to the next level, to sharpen you and to help you. Now, one of the things I found out, um, and you can research this and maybe talk to someone who does this as a profession, but I do know that you can use the wrong type of thing to try to sharpen something. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I learned it when I was learning uh, body shop work, fixing cars, painting cars. There's yes, different sir. grades of sandpaper. Yes, sir. And there's, there's coarse sandpaper and there's fine sandpaper. Then there's ultra fine sandpaper. And we use each one of them for a specific purpose. Okay. And so sometimes when we don't know how to sharpen one another's saw, we can go in there very abrasive. That's not what we needed. We were we were in a place where we needed a more a more uh, a, a finer uh, uh, sandpaper or yes. or thing that we're talking about. It's the conversation. It's the tone. Uh, sometimes we can't have the conversation we need to have because we're coming in like a sledgehammer when we need to be walking very lightly and very soft toned. Does that make sense? And Absolutely. we can get through this thing. Um, so I believe that in, the, in, in that conflict, many people back out because, again, we don't have the conflict resolution skills yes. that we need. And can I tell you something? Can I yes, tell sir. you what, what was my what my what my uh, antidote was? The Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit. It balanced me. Yes. Uh, it began to tell me. You need to say that softly, not right now. Okay, not right now. Anybody that that knew my wife, my wife was the precious as person you want to do, but she grew up hard, and so if you talk to her wrong, she is gonna come come back very aggressive, and she she was choleric. Yes, but I could say some of the hardest things to her in the right tone, and she could receive it. Does that make sense? Yes, and sir. I had to learn that, you know, in the beginning. Man, that that wasn't gonna work, boy. That was that was a that was a war. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we want no wars. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? And and so you got to learn how to use the thing, even with your children. Each one of your children is different. You got to know. I got to say it to this one this way. I got to show this one this. Mm -hmm. uh, are you you feeling what I'm saying? And that's yes. the importance of 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 knowing how to sharpen one another. Do yeah. we need to be sharp and do we need to communicate better? But we got to say, do we have good communication skills? Ooh, we don't communicate good. We just can't talk. We just can't talk. Well, do we have the skills to talk? Okay. Can you listen? Can you be honest and open and transparent? I don't like talking to you because you talk so loud. And to me, it's like you're screaming at me. I'm just loud. I'm just, I just, I just got a big voice. Okay. But for me, can you try to tone it down? Yes. Okay. And then you don't know that as a child, they were yelled at all the time. And it makes them feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Did it have anything to do with you? Mm -hmm. It didn't. You weren't there. However, when you know what the sum total of this person's makeup is, and every person is made up of, of all of their life's experiences, absolutely, whether they be good or bad. And I believe as we go forth, and, and especially in, when we start talking about marriage and different things of that nature, you're talking about the merging of two lives together. Mm -hmm. And you got to find out where you've been, what you've been through. Wow. And then have enough honor and respect and love for one another to say, you know what? I'm going to help soften that blow. I respect that I can't talk loud to you because of where you're being. And what happens is a healing will come forth in that person. It sure will. And your communication can get better and better and better. And you, you, you'll you stop avoiding conflict because mm -hmm. you've learned how to communicate and how to resolve it. Yes. 
does yes, that make sir. sense yes sir yeah many times we we will we'll, we'll, we got to choose our battles <laughs> we're going to a battle and we're losing the war wow okay yeah um so there's a lot of dynamics but that comes mm -hmm. with experience that comes with us having conversations it mm -hmm. comes with us being honest and say you know what uh i know we're supposed to be together but we ain't doing good together it's okay you got to learn how to be together mm. come on wow this is the merging together of two lives yeah and forgive quickly forgive quickly <laughs> forgive quickly and but don't you know, we're taught forgiveness if we forgive somebody we're taken down from our point. Mm -mm. Come on. I, and, I'm saying you're right and I'm wrong or whatever it may be. Right. You know, right. that's not the case. No. This is about us winning. Yeah. This is about us being relationship, being in a relationship. This is about us seeing all the good that God wants to bring out because our lives are together, whether it be friends, whether it be in the workforce whether it be, um, you know, in a marriage, okay, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So we just got to work on this. Is it personality or temperament or is it purpose? Now, mm -hmm. if your purpose, if it's not the purpose of God, your purpose in your life and the purpose of another life is never going to meet together and it's not going to help each other achieve it, then know that relationship is not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But you can learn the different temperaments and know how to uh one can be strong in one area and one is weak in the other none of it's bad everybody has weaknesses and strengths and when you learn how to function together you can honor and you can respect people they're not soft because they're because they're uh uh, uh melancholy well they just soft no 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 they're not soft okay That's good yeah and so understanding these types of things help us to be more relational and uh, have great relationships and be successful in the things we set out to do. Hey, Kima, my, my, my cousin's on. Bless you, dog. Listen, that's our time today. That is our time today. <laughs> we got to get back into this because I want to talk about chemistry. I want to talk about competence. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I want to talk about character. And we've done some of that. But conflict will will sometimes reveal to you that your character isn't where it needs to be. In order to have this relationship, you're going to have to work on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people can't keep a job because <laughs> of their character. Talk about it, Bishop. Yeah, yeah. So you can't keep a relationship because of your character. Wow. Oh, my. Listen, we love you guys, and uh, thank God for listening. Share, share, share. Comment in the comment section. You can still do this even after we go off of this live broadcast. We we read them. We listen to them. We make notes about them, and we bring them up in our next conversation. You've been listening to Life Lessons Live with Stephanie Monique and the crew. Thank you, Just, for chiming in. Kima, uh, everybody that listening. Charlotte, God bless you. We love you guys. And please tell everybody to go out. It's on the YouTube channel. Um, and they can um, subscribe. It's free. You That's can see right. all of the things we've done and talked about over the last couple of years. All right. And it's, it's, it's some good stuff. We don't know everything, but that what we know we do try to share. We love you guys, and we will see you all next week. Yep. All right.